You are now listening to the sounds of Mood Swing Music Group. What's up, man? Welcome, Black, to the channel. And uh, today, what we gonna do, man, uh, we gonna get into, like, the fourth part of this series. Originally, I said it was gonna be a six-piece, six-part series, but you know what? It just depends on how far we get today as far as messing with this so we gonna i think we dropped a little bass on here already but we'll mess with that bass and then we'll add some more and then uh from there man we just see where it goes man as far as getting it mixed and turning it into an actual song so let's go in here and get this baby fired up let's get it popping yeah, and I hope everybody been doing well, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all the new subscribers, man. I see y'all. Uh, shout out to everybody dropping comments. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody uh, hitting my email and asking questions. I will ad I will address some of those questions and answer some of those questions at, at some point. Uh, right now, I want to focus on getting this done. But, uh, yeah, I, I get a lot of questions about the studio, uh, about the setup, about the cost, about a lot of stuff like that, man. And I'm just going to tell you up front, I'm a, a stickler for all that stuff, so I can give you the exact cost for everything I paid for, for every item in here. I'm just one of those type people, man. It's the Virgo in me. Uh and But I will start by saying that you don't need all of this to do what we're doing right here. You really don't. This is just the way my setup is because I run a full-fledged commercial recording studio. So that's the way mine is. To do what we're doing, you don't need all of this. So I hope nobody thinks that you got to have all of this stuff just to do what we're doing because you really don't. I mean, it's really cut and dry what we doing here it's not rocket science it is just science so let's get back to what we were doing here man with this melody series uh i got these things here muted don't know why but you know what let's see adrenaline is my base so let's mute these and see what we did as far as base let's mute this one and let's see what it sounds like no before we do that let's do this let's go into preferences and see if we have the audio set up so that you can hear it so let's see what this sounds like And it sounds like what I did is made this adrenaline, put a little bit of reverb on it. Uh, yep, a little bit of distortion. And that's pretty much that. So let's turn on another instrument with it to see how it sounds.
man. So, so far what we got, it sounds pretty good. I mean, I didn't realize we got this far on this track. So what we got so far, we got the piano, the chorus, the heaven strings, and the adrenaline bass, along with a drum kit that has one, two, three, four items, four uh, instruments actually programmed already, which, uh, wow, sounds pretty good. So... I think I would want to add one more instrument to this just to give it something something to thicken up the sound. Uh, and outside of that, I would I'm, I'm, I think what we can do is add some more of these drum sounds as we get into mixing the song and see where we want these. So it looks like we got some claps and stuff like that that we can add along the way, and I think we should. Uh, so let's see here. We got this on that one. B1 has those instruments, and I think I had loaded an instrument on the C1 group, and I did. Let's see what this is. Yeah, now that that right there is something that can thicken things up. Let's uh, let's go in. Let's see what this is. This is called Shine. This is called Shine, and it is from the Massive Collection. Let me see where we are in Massive Soul that you are not totally lost. So yeah, it's from the massive collection. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't really see what it's under though. So let's see, man. Let's see what we can do with this sound. Here, let's see what this part sounds like that we got. From that I, It looked like I programmed it in there. I might have been messing with this uh, offline or something. Let's see. sounds so sinister man you know what I'm, I'm tempted to do though just to make this I mean we could do this really easy let's go here let's go here and we can take this bass progression and we could possibly ah, but let's try something let's do something different man what the hell I don't know what I want to try, but let's try some. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's just paint some stuff in. First of all, let's just do whatever it is we think we want to do. That'll be a good start. Just do whatever it is we think we want to do, right? So this whole thing is us learning how to make a beat, learning how to make a track learning how to make a track without adding so many instruments and making it so damn musical like you're doing a Tonk Project song or something like that. 
Because you got to remember, man, whenever you're doing hip hop, and I'm going to say hip hop right now, uh, I do R&B, jazz, all of that, but you have to remember, you have to leave space in the track for the artist. You cannot just load the track up with every sound you want that you think sounds good. Save some of those sounds for a different track because what will happen is you end up with a track that's just flooded with instruments. It may sound really good. I'm not saying it won't sound good, but then when you go to add vocals and when you send it out to get mixed and mastered, that's when you're going to start having problems with trying to get those tracks mixed properly without being muddy, without being thin, because they start having to take away and add to instruments and vocals so much that it don't even sound, it just sounds synthetic. It doesn't sound natural anymore. So you want to stay away from adding too many instruments because you never want your music to end up sounding synthetic. I know it sounds crazy because we are making a, a, a track solely on a computer so it is synthetic but you still need to humanize your music by not making it by not going so synthesized with it so you you have to be mindful of that and uh it's just some you know it's just one of those things man that you have to really get in and pay attention to because I hear a lot of good music, and then I hear a lot of good music that's not thought out really well, you know. And then I get a lot of music to mix and master from people, man. It's just like uh, you end up talking to them like, so what do you want to subtract from this track? What what can you live without? Because you just can't put everything on the track, man. So I want you guys to start doing that too. Listen to your favorite songs and notice, like, you may have something super musical, but when the singer or rapper comes in, a lot of that music will drop out, and you'll end up with a with a, a bass foundation of the track that they sing or rap to, and then when it's time for it to hit that bridge, they'll bring a lot of that stuff back in, and that's when you'll get the full... Uh, fill in other tracks. You can add a lot of stuff if you got an idea for something like that, but just know a lot of that stuff is going to be dropping in and out, being sequenced in and out a lot so that you can make room for vocals and stuff. But if you're not doing anything for vocals, you can pretty much do what you want to do. The world is yours. The world is your oyster. 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 Whatever the fuck it is. But yeah, man, so let's go here. Let's drop this in. I don't know what I'm doing. So let's do something like this and hit play. So yeah, what I'm doing, man, I'm just really coming in here and dropping this, dropping these notes in here where I uh, kind of basically in the same key as the bass line.
So what I did right there, man, I made it really dark, right? And then at the end, I kind of lightened it up. So what you can do, you can play with that a little bit. You can have it lightened up like that and try that out, or you can try this out. You can come down and see how you like it just all the way dark. You can do all of that based on uh you can do a lot of that based on what type of track you want to make this end up being so we're gonna leave it like that for now and this is all we're gonna do as far as instrumentation uh we might go back and play with the bass a little bit add a few more bass notes once we really get to messing with this and uh as we start mixing and and messing around with it we can add anything we want so <clears throat> the main thing with with using machine in the way that I'm showing you is I'm trying to show you that you can actually build the track piece by piece. And I have literally not messed with this track in over a month. And I can come right back to this track and finish adding to this track. So this is just something for you guys to think about. When you, when you know what it is you want to do, you can lay the foundation to your track. And then you can always come back later and work on the track. So I've been doing this series for over a couple of months now, and I, I don't have time to come down and mess with this beat at all. So basically, I, I really wanted to do it this way to show you guys that you don't have to sit there and burn your brain to make an entire track all at one time. I think that's where a lot of producers get frustrated. So if you sit down, if you got the main idea say for instance you you hum in a beat all day sit down on machine make the beat as long as you make the beat get it at the tempo you like come you can come back to it later the main thing is to just get that idea out now here we are a couple months later man we just in the game with this we finna take this track right now and we gonna start the mixing process so or not necessarily the mixing process today we start sequencing so basically what we're going to start doing now, we're going to go in here and we're going to start sequencing and seeing how we want everything to play with each other. So you got pattern one, I mean, you got scene one, scene two, scene three. We can name those if we want to. So let's go in here and name this one. Let me get my handy dandy keyboard and we'll name this one drum track. And then we'll name this one we will name this one instruments because it's going to change but this will be that one will be instruments and then we'll name this one what do we do here on this one? We'll just call this one we we'll call this one instrument two. Then we can go Here, let's look at this. Is this what we want? Double click on that bar there so that you can see the entire setup. It looks like we got, so it looks like we stopped at a, at four bars. So let's close this, have a little more real estate. Yeah, it looks like we stopped at four bars. Looks like we were starting up when we started. So what we can do if we would like to. Now we'll leave it like that. 
we keep things simple. So we go back up here to pattern, and then we can just duplicate. Let me show you why I'm duplicating this in a minute. Nah, you know what? Let's not. Not yet. Let's do one more thing to the pattern before we duplicate it. Let's do one more thing. So let's mute all of our music and listen to our drum pattern. We grab this pencil tool here and we start drawing in some drawing in us some notes. Let's do one more thing. Let's uh we change from a sixteen. To a 30 second. That way when we add stuff in, we can have some variation to it. Let's grab our pencil tool back. Trying to see what I want to add here. Uh... 